Example one of working in Photoshop. The first example of developing artwork in Photoshop focuses on combining two images together as one. As in all new creative modules, I'm using a selection of artwork inspired directly from the original photo walk. So you'll be familiar with some of these images I'll show. You'll be able to try this example out for yourself using the two files made available in this module. So let's begin. Once you have opened Photoshop on your computer, go to File and Open. The name of the first file we will open is called Photo Walk Shadow, which is a JPEG found in the Photoshop Example 1 folder. Click OK to open the file and it will appear in the middle of your working area. Often my first step is to alter the brightness and contrast of an original photograph. To do this, go to Image and Brightness and Contrast and up will pop a box with two dials, one for brightness, which could be described as shining a light on your image, and Contrast, which makes the dark areas darker and the light areas lighter if you increase the contrast. I'm going to increase both the contrast and the brightness a little here by moving the dials to the right. When I'm ready, I press OK. If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you can see the history bar, which shows a record of all the steps you take in Photoshop during that working period. Once the file is closed, the history will disappear, it won't be, it won't be saved. During the period of time working on the file, you can click back and forth on the steps to undo or redo your actions. So the next step is to go to File and Open and select the Tracing Paper Sculpture file and press Open. You can see the new file opens whilst the original file is still accessible by clicking on the tab for the Photo Walk Shadow file just beside it. I would like to slightly crop this file to remove the black shape in the right hand bottom corner. So to do this I select my rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar on the left hand side, clicking the icon that looks like a square. Once selected I can draw a box within my image which is the outline to the area I want to keep. Click and drag the mouse to draw the box and then release the mouse. You should find that what I call the marching ants now showing the area you have selected, like a dotted line across your page. As long as you have these marching ants, any next step will only apply to what's inside the selected area of the marching ants. I choose to crop. To do this, go to Image and then Crop, and you'll see how we have cut away the area outside the marching ants. To get rid of the marching ants, just click once in the image to deselect. Now I would like to adjust the levels of light and dark in this file. We could use brightness and contrast, but this time I will select image adjustments and levels. By moving the three dials here on the graph, you can experiment with adjusting the light, dark and midpoint levels in the image to transform the original image. Press OK when you're ready. I now want to copy the whole image, ready to paste onto the first image of the photo walk wall shadow file. To do this, there are two methods. I can click on select along the top bar and then press select all and then the marching ants will appear again, selecting the entire image. Or you can select the rectangular marquee tool again and draw a box around the entire image yourself. Each method has the same outcome. Your image is selected. Now go to Edit and Copy to copy this whole image. I click on the tab for the Photo Walk Wall Shadow to bring back this particular file to the front of my working space. And now I select edit and then paste. And you'll notice that the tracing paper sculpture image now appears on the top of the photo wall shadow image. Because I cropped the size of the paper sculpture photo, it is smaller than the original underneath. I want them to both be the same size. 
So a quick way to adjust this is to click on the Move tool. You'll find this on the left-hand side column of tools. You'll see how the bounding controls appear around the outside of the image. As long as the Show Transformation controls is selected, you can manipulate the size of the image by stretching it at the sides to fit over the original image. When fully stretched to fit the size, press OK to be sure to allow the computer to action this particular step. If I select the Layers box in the right hand side, of the screen, you can see the details of layer one, which is the paper sculpture file. To work on individual layers in your artwork, you can use the layer box to select the layer you want to focus on at any one time. With the top layer selected, we are now going to see what happens if we alter the blending mode of that layer. To do this, select the box that says normal and scroll down the list to find exclusion and you can see the result in this blending change. Have a go at changing between different blending options to see how they work. They either lighten what's underneath the layer or they darken what's underneath, or do a combination of both, as in this exclusion option. I like using the blending tools as a way of really transforming and surprising myself with the color and textual possibilities of an artwork. Another more predictable way of altering colour in your artwork is to experiment with hue and saturation. Find this tool by selecting image and adjustments and then hue and saturation. Changing the hue alters where in the colour spectrum the hue is, moving through the rainbow of colour. Changing the saturation will either increase the loudness of the colour or decrease in the colour in the image towards zero, taking your image to the grey scale. Changing the lightness will increase the amount of white in your image, either to lighten or darken. Just to note, at this point, this tool will show up differently when the layer has had a blending tool applied to it which in this case is with exclusion. So have a try with hue and saturation when the blending mode is normal and you'll see the difference in this effect. I'm going to alter the hue and saturation here a little and once I'm happy with the levels, I will press OK. I now want to save my work and to do this, I go to File and Save As and make sure the Photoshop format is selected, which is the PDS version. I give the file a new name and press save and OK to the message that pops up. So that is the full original artwork, including layers, now saved. So I can return to a later time and all my layers will still be intact for further editing. Suppose I want to send this artwork away to be digitally printed on paper or fabric. I need to flatten the artwork, which will make the artwork just one layer instead of two. To do this, I go to Layer and Flatten Image. If you look to the layer box, you can see now that only the background is showing. If you want to undo this, you can go back a step in your history box. Now the image is flattened, any adjustments I make will happen to the entire image and not just to the individual layers that I have selected. I decide to increase the brightness and contrast a little and also the hue and saturation, both tools found in image and adjustments. Before I save again as a flattened file, I want to adjust the image size ready to print. So I go to image and image size. A new sizing box pops up. I click off the button for proportional sizing as I want to create a custom size of an A4 dimension. 
which is 29.7 centimetres by 21 centimetres. Printing companies often ask for a resolution between 180 to 300 dpi, which stands for dots per inch. So this is where you can also adjust the resolution. I'm making this 300 dpi, which is a very common requirement. I then press OK. I also want to show you how to change the colour mode of your artwork ready for printing. For example, sometimes companies request artwork as an RGB file or CMYK mode. This helps your artwork to be compatible with their printers. It's best if you can make this change and be satisfied with the colour result before sending to print. Now I will save as again and change the file format to the TIFF file, T-I-F-F. -F. This is a common file type which is accepted widely and limits the compression that goes on but still reducing the size but maintaining the quality of the image. I don't need to change the name as I'll recognise this file type by its prefix TIFF. You may wish to simply upload your artwork to the web for social media sharing or to upload to your own website for example. It's now important to reduce the file size. This will make it more compatible with various platforms and keep your uploading times to a minimum. So to do this go to file, export and save for web. A new window will pop up Select your JPEG as a high quality, around 60% is good. Press save. I'm going to give this a new name so I can recognise it easily as a small file. I'll show you now the three files we have created from this one artwork. The PSD file, which is the Photoshop file, our original unflattened Photoshop file, which is the largest at 88 megabytes. The next is the TIFF file, which is a flattened file and reduced in size to 26.1 megabytes. This will be an acceptable file size for good quality digital printing at this A4 dimension in real size. Lastly, we have the saved for web JPEG file, which is reduced right down to 1.5 megabytes, a size ideal now for social media uploads like Twitter, which has a three megabyte limit for each image upload. And that completes our first exercise. Have a go yourself, working through the example images supplied and try the same actions, but feel free to experiment with different levels of hue and saturation and brightness and contrast and blending styles and have fun.